a possibly revolutionary shift in the XRP space is about to occur. People are discussing the possibility of burning all the XRP currently in escrow, but the current burn rate stands at just 5,000 XRP per day, or 1.82 million XRP annually. There is growing conjecture that this pace is rising. Some commentators even go so far as to say that up to 25,000 XRP are being burned. Remarkably, Daily reports link this action to Ripple's escrow accounts. With remarks from a former Ripple director suggesting that Ripple may carry out a one-time, catastrophic burn of all the XRP in escrow, the issue takes a more drastic turn. What makes this scenario even more intriguing is that the chances of it occurring seem to be more than simply conjecture. Ripple Labs is in sync with its timing. Ripple Labs has declared a buyback of almost $1 billion worth of XRP from its circulating supply, prompting many to speculate that the buyback and possible escrow burn may be connected to Ripple's SEC settlement and that the buyback is necessary as Ripple still requires XRP. If Ripple's whole XRP escrow were to burn, the ramifications of such an escrow burn would be immense. My analysis, along with the increasing number of partnerships Ripple Labs is forming and their requirement for XRP to support these collaborations, suggests that a valuation of $10,000 per XRP might be necessary for the ongoing operation and growth of Ripple Labs, even though the value of XRP could soar to $10,000 per token. Let's perform some housekeeping before we begin today's content. If you could do me a tremendous favor, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and enable those alerts so that you can join our vibrant community. Many articles have echoed this sentiment, stating that XRP will reach $10,000 as a result of Ripple's cross-border payment partnerships. The expanding global partnerships of Ripple, their reliance on XRP's exponential growth trajectory, and recent leaked and publicized reports, particularly one from BlackRock, confirm its global expansion. This study underscores the key concepts of XRP's evolving role as a globalized cross-border payment service. The Central Bank of Ireland's recent declaration that it plans to use XRP for cross-border transactions is fueling this trend. This action not only shows that XRP is a dependable and effective payment option, but it also officially acknowledges that Ripple, the business that created XRP, has a registered virtual asset. As a service provider, this is a noteworthy validation of XRP's potential in the financial industry and its global reach. The Central Bank of Japan has initiated the implementation of XRP for its global payment solutions. More than 30 central banks are currently actively working together to create a central bank digital currency based on the XRP, which is part of a broader trend. It has been claimed that the ledgers of these 19 central banks have acquired more than $9.4 billion worth of XRP. This amount does not even account for the Fed's possible adoption of XRP as an immediate payment system. Based on information that has been disclosed, XRP is being considered by the Fed Instant Payment Platform to manage the blockchain component of their payment system. The importance of the U.S. Federal Reserve's plan to acquire full ownership of XRP and Ripple Labs cannot be overstated. This development is a glaring sign of the increasing trust in XRP's technology and its fit for contemporary financial applications. Action intended to stop BL and retail the Federal Reserve strategy, which uses the XRP ledger and digital assets in place of creating a traditional CBC central bank digital currency, is to take advantage of the Ripple system's cost-effectiveness, efficiency, and environmental friendliness. This approach is especially pertinent in light of the global trend, where major central banks in more than eight countries, including the British, have already partnered with Ripple Labs to adopt the RippleNet system. The Federal Reserve's involvement with blockchain technology is further highlighted via the XRP ledger. According to one of their reports, the Fed now has officially said that XRP and XLM may play a significant role in the blockchain element of their Fed payment system. One important step in combining traditional banking with decentralized banking is the cooperation of services with metal blockchain for fast fiat and stable coin conversions. Money currently, the only ways for U.S. citizens to make instant domestic payments are through digital wallets for cryptocurrencies or third-party apps like Venmo and PayPal. 
However, the FedNow system is currently being developed with plans to incorporate cryptocurrencies into its framework. This platform has attracted over 120 organizations, including newcomers like U.S. Bank Exchange Bank and numerous payment processors and solution providers. With the possible integration of Ripple into the Fed, now Ripple is renowned for its cutting-edge international payment systems and open-source distribution. Among the fintech businesses being considered for this effort is Ledger Technology. Furthermore, Stellar Lumens XLM, which is well known for its blockchain-based payment network that makes international transactions faster and more affordable, is also on the list of possible partners for the FedNow service. This returns us to the two main points of our conversation, the possibility that XRP will soon hit $10,000 and the possible widespread burning of XRP from Ripple Labs escrow. The predicted mass burning of XRP from Ripple escrow could be the catalyst for XRP to hit the anticipated $10,000 price point, making these two things interrelated and marking a significant milestone for the digital asset. This expectation has become much more definite. By claims made by Matt Hamilton, a former director of Ripple, that the company might burn all of the XRP held given its ongoing legal battle with the SEC which raises the possibility that such a burn could be included in a prospective settlement agreement, this revelation is especially important in its escrow wallet. This has wide-ranging implications. A massive burn in XRP supply could not only raise its price to $10,000, but it would also result in an unprecedented demand for XRP from institutional and retail investors who are increasingly looking to use digital assets like XRP for cross-border payments. As a result, we would see a significant decrease in XRP's available supply, necessitating a higher valuation per XRP token. The sheer volume of transactions that XRP is expected to handle is astounding. We're talking about over 1.2 quadrillion. The enormity is aptly captured in this article, which makes it apparent that XRP wants to enable transactions worth more than $1.2 trillion in USD, and that's only one aspect of the problem. This number doesn't even account for other significant systems and players where XRP is anticipated to have an effect. It does not include SWIFT's possible usage of XRP for payments. Plans by SBI to increase XRP remittances throughout Southeast Asia and notable purchases by financial behemoths like JP Morgan and BlackRock, who are rumored to have started purchasing more than 7.5 million XRP additionally, this calculation does not account for Ripple collaborations, like the one with a payment giant to improve digital asset transactions and facilitate cross-border payments in Africa when we the need for an even greater value of XRP becomes clear when you take into account. The additional quadrillions from central banks and nations adopting XRP in addition to the trillions from the private financial sector. We may be looking at a possible valuation of between $50,000 and $75,000 per XRP coin. Although this may seem unrealistic, it is consistent with the fact that XRP is set to enable enormous amounts of money to be transferred internationally. Even though XRP is only worth $0.62 cents right now, I initially bought it because of its potential and technology. To manage enormous sums of money that convinced me of its potential, it is precisely this potential that calls for XRP to have a high future value far above its current valuation. Please keep in mind that I am not a licensed financial advisor and that the information in these videos is only meant for entertainment. I always advise viewers to do their own research and speak with experts before making any financial decisions. Many thanks if you liked the video, please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe box as well. Ensure that the notifications are turned on to be the first to know when I post new material. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Be careful.